Good day everybody and uh, welcome back to DX Explorer for one more video. Um, I promised last week that I'm going to show you the antenna that I'm going to build and uh, replace my older antenna. Uh, the older antenna that I had was uh, a 40 meters band and fed wire, uh, half wave. And uh, right now I'm going to replace it with a new antenna which is still a half wave. Uh, but uh, it's made for the 80 meters band, 40 meters, 20 meters, 50 meters and uh, 10 meters band as well. So it's a multi-band and fed wire, uh, probably not perfect. I'm not sure if it's going to resonate as well on all of the bands, but at least uh, I'm trying. <laughs> so uh, yeah, I'll show you um, I'll show you the antenna and uh, I'll explain how it works. So basically, uh, the main part it's the the long wire. This is the beginning of the antenna. Uh, of course, now I have it all in one coil, but I'm going to extend it. And uh, this one it's uh, 20 meters and 35 centimeters long. And then I have a coil. I'm gonna show you details of the coil in a little bit. Uh, this one, it's uh, made out of uh, 0.6 um, enamel copper wire. Um, the number of turns specifically for the one that I've built on a 20, mi 20 millimeters uh, diameter PVC pipe, it's uh, 195 turns. Here you have a little detail about how I tied uh, the cable to the ends of the coil. I've also soldered the connections um, and also put the screw on top to hold everything in place. And this uh, way, even if the connections are getting corroded, there is still an electrical connection uh, between the antenna wire and the coil. And uh, from the coil to the very end of the antenna, I have another piece of wire. This one it's uh, uh, 2 meters and 39 centimeters. This is the very end of the antenna. This side is going to end up uh, being tied uh, to the pole that's supporting the antenna. So uh, one important part, uh, a piece of the puzzle uh, to say like that, uh, to connect the long part of the wire to the coaxial cable that will take the signal uh, to your receiver or transmitter. It's the 49 to 1 impedance transformer. I think I already have a video for this one. I built one more right now because I'm gonna take that one down, the older one, and rebuild it and uh, make something else. Um, this one is just a little bit different comparing to the other one. Uh, basically the, co the coil is the same. Uh, I'll have a link for the video up in the top, uh, top corner of the screen. So uh, the end of the coil goes to the, to the point where I'm going to connect the long part, uh, the long wire of the antenna. And here in the back I have the BNC for the um, uh, coaxial cable connection. You'll figure out watching the video. Uh, but anyway, the midpoint of the <laughs> of the coil after the two turns of the primary is going to the center pin of the coaxial cable, and then the very beginning of the primary goes to the ground. Between the ground and the center pin of the coaxial cable there is a 100 picofarads capacitor. Unfortunately I didn't have the 100 picofarads and I didn't have anything to make one so I ended up using a 130 so I hope it will work but it should work. I used 150 in the past and it still worked fine. And then uh, also from the ground point, from the ground connection, I have another one going here to this screw. And here you can e either connect it to ground or in my case I'm going to connect it to another piece of wire which is about uh, 4 meters long as a counterpoint. 
and pretty much uh, this is all the antenna now uh, for even better results especially for this type of, uh, of the antennas uh, things go like this so you have the very end of the wire of the antenna you have the coil you have the long part of the antenna then you have the 49 to 1 impedance transformer together with the counterpoint and from here the signal uh, the way I'm going to do it uh, in just a little bit it will go to uh, an RF choke and then from the RF choke I'm gonna have another coaxial cable running down uh, through the attic into my room and uh, from there it will go connected uh, to the um, transmitter or the receiver and uh, probably I will also use um, an antenna tuner at some point when I'll build one but uh, right now I'm going to use the older impedance transformer that I had built and I'm gonna take the the core and build an RF choke because I don't have one so probably next week I'm gonna show you the video about how I made the RF coil for now it will also work without uh, an RF choke so yeah basically what the antenna is it's a regular uh, 40 meters band uh, and fed antenna and then you add uh, the coil and the ending of the antenna to create uh, an 80 meters band antenna and pretty much that's it so basically the antenna that i have right now that i'm using and it's installed up in the attic uh, in coming in the garden it's just the 49 to money impedance transformer and this piece of wire right here no <laughs> until the the coil i don't have the coil and everything else so that's that's why i'm replacing the one that i have so i can test the receiver for more bands and uh, yeah pretty much that's it so yeah pretty short video uh, for this week uh, it's been raining like crazy I didn't have time to do anything I was planning to also install this antenna and uh, test it and show you a test of the antenna as well but unfortunately with all the rainy days that we had it was pretty much impossible um, one more thing that I did uh, to the coil um, I wish I had some uh, heat shrink but I uh, tube but I didn't have so I ended up using some black tape on top of the coil and uh, then I've just uh, sprayed the entire coil and the PVC with a, a couple of layers of uh, varnish so this way it's going to be protected against the rain and uh, hopefully it will last longer uh, what can I say I'll try to install it and uh, take down the older antenna so I can also build the RF choke and probably in the uh, in the next video after building the RF choke I'm also going to do uh, the test of this antenna in the video coming next weekend um, about the RF choke that I'm going to build um, what else I should say I think it's a great uh, uh, great antenna for portable as well uh, you can build it even uh, lighter and smaller you don't need uh, wire as thick as mine I just uh, build it like this because uh, lately apparently we have strong winds in here and I want things to be uh, pretty solid and in the winter time as well uh, when the snow is falling um, the antenna gets pretty heavy with uh, all the snow that gets stuck on the wire so um, I'm going to use the one that I have now the piece of wire and create uh, another antenna a lighter one for portable use and then I'll use this one for uh, for my house um, one other thing about the coil the important thing about the coil is just the inductance uh, 110 uh, 105 sorry I was wrong 105 uh, micro Henry's and uh, basically the diameter of the pvc it doesn't have to be 20 millimeters as mine is you can make it four millimeters you can make it five you can make it one it doesn't matter <coughs> sorry you'll just have to do the number of turns uh, as many as you need 
to get 105 micro henries. You can use an online calculator depending on the wire that you have. Thicker wire, it means uh, more power into the antenna. Probably me with a couple of milliwatts, maybe no more than 5 watts, this one should do uh, pretty well. Um, what can I do? I love QRP. And uh, yeah, so uh, you can even use uh, not this kind of wire that I use for the antenna. This is the one with uh, many, many thin wires inside and they're all braided together. Uh, basically the copper uh, the copper wire with uh, insulation those are great uh, to build these ones uh, maybe you can find something like uh, one millimeter copper wire and the insulation you calculate uh, using an online calculator and then you build a coil most probably on a bigger piece of uh, PVC pipe like four four centimeters and uh, this way the coil it won't be as long as uh, as it would be with a 20 millimeters uh, coil. Initially, I had some uh, one millimeter copper wire that I wanted to use for the coil. Um, I needed about 270 turns or 290 turns, something like that. But unfortunately, the wire was not enough, so I had to uh, uh, <laughs> build it with a 0.6 millimeters uh, wire that I had. One more thing I wanted to talk about is the end of the antenna. If you see, uh, that's the antenna cable that comes from the roof of my house here in the garden. And then I have a, a plastic insulator over there and then a short wire going to the antenna pole that I'm going to have to replace. But right now, that's all I have. Just make sure, uh, let me see if I can show you that piece of wire over there. That one, it should be like a rope or a plastic wire and it's a little bit longer, maybe like one, two meters to keep the end of the antenna away from the metallic pole. Uh, yeah, I built it in a rush and that's all I had. So that's uh, one good thing to get uh, better results with antenna. So yeah, pretty much that's it for this week. I'll see you next week uh, building the RF choke and then uh, thanks to my uh, uh, one of my subscribers to Nigel uh, from New Zealand I'll have a video coming uh, the week after that about the pixie transceiver um, he made me a nice present I'll explain you in that video and uh, I started to play around with uh, with the, um, the little transceiver and uh, oh my god I'm beating the heck out of it uh, sorry Nigel but that's why <laughs> that's why I like to experiment with things and uh, probably I'm gonna end up building my own pixie uh, the end using the parts that I'm uh, that I have in the kit but right now I installed it it works and uh, it doesn't work <laughs> it's far away from the way I like things to be so I'm testing and I'm trying different methods to see if I can improve it just a little bit but anyway until next week 73 have an amazing week happy DXing